bear with me a little bit now. I feel it coming on, so I might be a little nasally here today, but par for the course, all right? That time of year. I, well, here's what I didn't realize. I didn't realize he was talking about Luke Combs last week. And uh, little do you know that, that Luke Combs went to my high school. He was a freshman or sophomore when I was a senior. Um, not the only country music star to go through AC Reynolds in Asheville, because one of my best friends growing up was Chase Rice. So we got a, we got a little uh, rhythm going down there. This topic today. Halloween? Yeah, that sort of stuff. Okay. Was it as much fun as last week? He said, okay, good. Um, oh, I don't. <laughs> Let you down again. All right, well, then let's flip the topic to, to horror. We'll go to last week's game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, when... You, you, like five days ago, right? Like... <laughs> um, Look, when, when it gets off to that kind of start with, with the three and outs, how much are you, you putting on yourself in a week like that? Or, you know, I know Dan said execution was his biggest issue, but just from your perspective, how much are you putting on, on yourself in those situations? Yeah, we all look in the mirror. Um, clearly, I wish I had different plays in the opening script, you know, that ones that would have worked a little bit better. So, uh, but that's about it. Felt good going into the game with the plan that we had and, uh, you know, I had to deviate from that plan pretty early um, based on, on the situation. Probably shouldn't have felt like we, we had a good one. Should have just stuck to our guns and, and how we wanted to call that game. Um, but a lot of good lessons to be learned from that game. I think we're going to be a better crew for it. Said it many times this, this offensive line is the, the engine to how things run. Um, when, when you look at the film from this one, just maybe with some of the success the Ravens had with, with the Blitz, what, what's, um, I guess, the, the big area of focus there for a group that's you know pretty reliable one for you yeah i think uh i think across the board that whole group would tell you that we gave up too many sacks and too many pressures um they've been i mean heck the week before we threw it as many times as we did and they they held firm throughout and uh listen the, the drop back passing game that's not where we want to live and that's that's where we ended up living the majority of last week um so we, we just got to do a better job executing what's called and uh Hopefully we're not down 28 to nothing in the second quarter. We'll be all right. Just curious, when you, uh, when you have an opening script and you go three and out, do you just pick up the script the next series? I mean, do you, how do you, or do you change your approach? Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I gone back and forth just last week, you know, we had the nine plays, uh, the three runs that we had were, were okay. I think we had a four, or four and a three yard gain there in the run game. Um, and then the passing game, we had timing off. We had some protection issues, uh, one of them was a completely terrible call, certainly for the defense that they had. Um, the sack shouldn't have done that. And so, uh, like I said, it's the, the, the blame goes across the board last week, and, and uh, we learned from it, and now we're moving on. Just pick up on the script and go to play football. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. I mean, it's kind of what I'm feeling, too. You, you look up, and um, we got certain guys that are spark players for us that can help get us back on track, and, and uh, it's on me to make sure those guys are getting the ball. This week between Max and, and Panay, I know they'll move Max around, but um, normally over on the right side there, Panay, do, do you let yourself be a fan at all during a game when you get a matchup like that, or is it just all business? You're just trying to figure out how to stop him, or can you appreciate sometimes when two players of that caliber face off against? I'll appreciate it after the game, watching the tape, but in the moment, that's uh, that's not where my mind's going to be at. Um, necessarily, I mean, there's we, we got to account for him at all times. I think Coach Campbell's already alluded to how, how big of an impact that guy can have on a game. Um, so we need to know where he's at. Um, like you said, majority on the right, but they, they move him around enough too that uh, we got to be really sound with what we're doing. Um, I know Panay is really looking forward to the challenge though. What is the biggest challenge there with, with Max? <laughs> uh, nonstop motor stands out first and foremost, but th this guy's slippery now. He's, uh, he's strong, he's quick. Hard to get your hands on him, has an array of moves, and uh, he's given a lot of tackles, a lot of tight ends fit so far this year. A lot of um, targets for you in, in the time he was here, but played a lot, so he clearly had a role in the offense. So what what do you have to uh, replace with some of those young guys? Uh, what do they need to be able to give you uh, that you're losing with Marv? 
it's experience and professionalism. Um, we're still, I still feel like we're a young group overall on offense. And so he brought a demeanor and approach. He knew how to prepare um, that we're going to miss. I, I have a history with him. So even though he wasn't necessarily getting all the reps in practice, I knew come game day what we were going to get from the guy. And so uh, a, a huge reliability factor went into it. And that's where these young guys, they got to step up now and improve on a day-to-day -day basis so that they can fill that void. Jamal all the time, but Anton Green is, is seeing uh, an increased role in kind of making some of those snaps that, that Mark was previously getting. So what have you seen from Antoine early? Where, where are you looking for growth from him as the season progresses? He is, uh, he's playing faster. That's, that's the thing that stands out is he's thinking less, uh, not processing as, as much. And he's a fast guy. When he plays fast, he's an effective player. Um, and we see more of that in practice right now. And I think it's translating on over to the game also. Um, you know, the other guy that, that we don't mention enough, I don't think, is is Josh Reynolds. This guy's playing lights out, and uh, I'd be remiss not bringing him up. It's like every time we throw him the ball, it's, it's, it's a big play almost. So um, probably shouldn't have brought it up, just keep letting that fly under the radar. But, no, that, that whole group, man, Leaf, we talked about Leaf last, last week. I mean, they, the whole room is uh, – they're doing a phenomenal job. And given what you know of Jared Goff and what you've seen of him – in the past, just what's his demeanor been like this week and how comforting or um, confident are you? Like his bounce back seems to be pretty solid. What do you expect from him moving through this week and putting last week behind to go into this Raiders game? It, it, that's one of his superpowers, I think, is the ability to, to be resilient and when uh, criticism or poor play occur, he's able to just learn from it and move on quickly quickly he's got a short memory that way um and so he, he's approached this week the same as every other week he's been very much studying the tape and uh preparing like he normally does and and confident that we'll get the uh train back on the tracks here jameson had six targets clearly you were intending to get him the ball but there was a disconnect between that and the production i just wondered what's the cause of that time on task still you know and i know it's uh beating a dead horse by saying that, but, uh, you know, some guys take longer than others to develop a rapport with, and we just, we frankly aren't there yet. So we'll continue to work on it, and and it's going to come, and when it does come, I think we're all going to be pleased. Is he a solid award to improve with his ball tracking skills too, or his, his hands? I mean, it, maybe it seems like it's more than just time on task, or I don't know if those things come with it, but he's, he's got a handful of drops this year. I, yeah, it, it's repetition time and time again. He, uh, I think I've alluded to it before with him, consistent days stacking up back to back to back. And, uh, and that's really all we're focused on, us and him. So we'll continue to see improvement from his play as, as he continues to get more reps. I asked Jared this as, as well, but is there almost a, a quarterback trust factor too that you can throw it a little bit longer, a little bit earlier, and know he's the, the, the guy that can actually go out and get it more so than you know, most of the receivers in this league? There's no doubt. Throwing the ball down the field to him is completely different than anybody else that we have on this roster. Maybe he's been given that in the passing game to get him involved too. Maybe one game opportunities differently. To get him involved in games, maybe it's a different effect than in the passing game. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, listen, th this guy loves football. So the more we can get him involved, the better off I think we're going to be. Last week didn't get a ton of opportunity against, against Baltimore, but you went over one. I'm just curious, coming off those back-to-back -back games against Tampa and, and Baltimore, what do you learn specifically, or what can you glean specifically in that that red zone offense from, from maybe having some struggles? I feel really good about the plans we've put together the last couple weeks. Um, probably a couple different play calls would maybe result in different different uh, results. You know, I mean, that's, that's all I can look back at right now. Next week, we'll, we'll dive deep into our self-scout and we'll find out. But uh, I, I know the staff, uh, Coach Campbell's involved, the, the offensive staff, we come up with with sound plays and, and uh, we'll take a look at really why we haven't scored the last couple of weeks then. It's been really good since you know, taking the reins. Um, AG was saying something along the lines of the, the positive of the Baltimore experience was just recognizing the gap you need to close to get as a team to that, that elite level. So, I mean, do you, do you see it similarly? Do you find 
value in that to just show you where where there's still room to grow and to get to that next level? It, there's no doubt. Um, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Coach Fox just told me earlier, and I know we've all heard that before, but uh, – but I mean, that was an example of it last week. I felt like, you know, we, we didn't we didn't necessarily get better last week and we faced a good opponent on the road and uh, and and got our butts kicked. So it wasn't a good feeling, but we did learn a lot from it. Um, offensively, we talked about that. Uh, shoot, we watched the film <laughs> plenty of times. And uh, like I said, we, we learned from it and we're ready to move on. Do you watch it more or do you try to move on quicker after a game like that? Is there is it any different than normal? Uh, some people have said, hey, it would have been a great week to have a Thursday night game just to move on from it. Um, and because it was a Monday night game, it felt like <laughs> it's once by myself, once with the quarterback, once with the head coach, once with the staff, once with the play. Like it just it kept piling on. But uh, it's the medicine that, that we all needed to taste this last week. So let's go. Uh, yeah, I think it just confirmed what, you know, what, what we felt. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Fired up Monday night. It's unbelievable. I won't tell any stories. <laughs> no, but there, there was. There actually, when I say that, like Monday night when I was a kid, man, I get to stay up for the Monday night game. I said, please, can I stay up a little bit late? And I was on the West Coast, so totally different. Um, gosh, on the East Coast, it's way past my bedtime. But even now, uh, anyway, now we're fired up. So did your parents let you stay up to watch them when you were young? Yeah, man, it was great. Uh, there was nothing like Monday football. There's two things about it I remember. One is uh, we always have, for some reason, we didn't do Tuesday night tacos. We did Monday night tacos. Um, God, I love Mexican food. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so we had tacos, and then we'd finished dinner, and the game was probably going. I think it was like, you know, the game started out there like five, I think. Um, so the game was going. We'd finish dinner, and then I'd go get to watch the game, and they'd let me stay up for the rest of the game. It was great. Was there a game of performance that stuck with you? Say that again? Was there a game of performance? Uh, no, I don't really remember any of the games. I just remember watching football and loving it. You know, when you were a kid, you'd jump into the couch, like you were trying to score the touchdown, you know, over the top of the over the top of the arm of the couch, you know, and dive into it. I had a twin brother, brothers, two brothers. So we'd always be wrestling around, pretending we were playing. It was good. Does Monday Night Football still have the same allure? You know, it's maybe a little different now than it used to be. I don't know, as coaches, do you pick up for a game like this still? Yeah, so stage? for us, um, no, I think it's, it's definitely still big for us. You know, there's something special always about it. And I think some of it is you draw them back to those days or those memories of what it meant to you then, you know. And so it still means something, you know. Um, but. I would say that definitely these games, more of them run together. The longer you do it, you know, the more it is like, okay, the next game. And when you're in my shoes, all you worry about is the next play, really. So, <laughs> uh, Vegas has been pretty good on special teams. Their kickoff returns towards the top, their net punts at the top. Good punt return. Like, what, what are they doing so well across the board? Yeah, there? you hit on it. This is a really good group. Um, got a lot of respect for them. Um, you know, they're an interesting group. Like, their punter is just, I mean, he, he's a great player. Um, he's punting the ball 50 yards down the field. They're outside the numbers both ways. He gets a lot of width on it, which makes it difficult for the return team. Um, helps the cover unit. So he gets a lot of width on the ball. He doesn't outkick the coverage either, necessarily. He puts it, like I say, about 50 yards down the field. He stretches the returner out. He makes that guy run right and left to catch the ball. He can look like he's going right and go left and look like he's going left and go right um, and still get the ball out there with a lot of width. Um, so really good player. And then uh, so that's kind of them on their punt team, their kickoff team. I mean, and don't get me wrong, they've got a bunch of good core players in there. Their kickoff team, 43, this guy runs down there. He's going to go hammer you. Um, and he's a, he's a factor. And they got a bunch of other good players, Coons, 51, 59. they got a bunch of speed guys, 22, 20. Um, they move guys all around. So those guys have done a nice job, but their kickers also hung the ball up there really well with a lot of hang time. Um, so he presents a challenge, and they present a challenge there. And then uh, in their return game, their returner, you guys know I've talked about him before. He's a, a guy I love. <clears throat> Just a great story in this league. He's a great person. 
really talented player. He knows who he is. He competes. Um, the reason he's there is because he's just such a competitive player. Um, he catches the ball. He's a super quick starter. He hits everything full speed. He believes he's going to make a play every time he touches it, and he is downhill in a hurry um, and ripping it right back at you. So it's hard to get him down, you know, on kickoff coverage. It's hard to tackle him down inside the 25 because um, he just gets started so fast. And then and they do a nice job blocking for him, and they got some nice plays that are built around his strengths, really. I think uh, McMahon, their coach over there, does a real nice job with them. So, yeah, it's a good team all the way around. we got our hands full. Did you see the Miles Garrett field goal block last week? You know what? I did not uh, see it yet. I, well, I guess that's not true. I think I saw it on something real quick, just flashed through. Um, but I saw him go over the top, and then I saw, I heard somebody said something about block jumps. I'm like, well, I told those guys that was the key <laughs> to the whole play. So you already knew it was coming. I never talking about those block jumps, but yeah, impressive play. Yeah. You start seeing who's got that in them on that D line around here. Yeah, like I said before, I think it takes like a unique player. Uh, we got some bigger guys, but I'm guessing you're not going to reveal the the best box jumper on the roster. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually have that. <laughs> you need to go get it. That's, that's Usually, it's one of those things. You, it's one of those things you hear, and then you're like, okay. Yeah. Get your special teams buddy from the combine that create an app for a box jump app for everybody. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Yeah, um, his role obviously depends on defense and all that. So he came back. He wasn't playing as much on defense. Um, he's done a nice job. I think he's really grown um, through his time here. And I feel like he's a lot better today than when he got here. You know, uh, special teams wasn't something he had done a lot of in college at Syracuse there. Um, he had done a little, but not a lot, and uh, so I think he's really developing as a player, and I, I feel like you know, he's gaining a lot more confidence as a player, too, for us, so that's positive. We need him. 41 and a half inch vertical, too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's on Tuesday. Do you have any general thoughts or feelings about Halloween? Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> They want me out of here. It's getting me. No, there's this thing, uh, Halloween stories. I have a lot of those. I can't share most of them. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's some good ones. But uh, no, this one time at band camp. No. <laughs> oh, man. My wife and I used to always joke with each other about that. It must have been some movie that came out a while back. I'm not a movie guy. Uh, it's American pop. <laughs> There you go, American Pie. Yeah, so I'm more like White Fang and Hoosiers, uh, Days of Thunder, The Natural is a good movie. All the current stuff, I'm out. <laughs> what, do you, what do you give out at Halloween? What's that? What, what kind of candy do you guys give out? Uh, the boss, uh, my wife, she takes care of that. I don't know. I hope it's a full bar. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what? It's crazy. I feel like not as many people come through anymore. Um, I don't know, man. When I was a kid, we were trying to get as much as we could get. But, uh, yeah, it's a great holiday. So what is, is, this you, is this you telling everybody in your neighborhood there's full bars coming out of your Yeah, house? come on down. No <laughs> doubt. Yeah, for sure. What, when is it? Tuesday. 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 Tuesday next week. Oh, right after the game. Yeah. Got it. People will be dressed up in the stadium, I'm sure. Huh? So people will be dressed up in the stadium in costumes, probably. Yeah, nice. Uh, I did want to ask about Cleaver even before you were done. Just, you know, I mean, the numbers that take down from last year hasn't quite had a lot of opportunities. But just what does he mean to the, the unit? And, you know, I know you have, you have much trust in him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we love him. Um, he's similar, really, to their returner. Um, he's just he's a downhill, quick to get started guy. He does a great job catching the ball. Um, he's got great range. He's a very, very trustworthy player back there. It, he's one of these guys that <clears throat> when you have him, you don't worry about a lot of things. As soon as you lose him, you realize how much the guy did for you. And I'm not talking about with the ball in his hands after the play, but just the communication, keeping our own players out of the way, still fielding the ball and keeping our guys out of the way. Um, the decision making, when to field it, when not to field it, when to press it, and really go after it, when not to. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and then obviously his ability to make guys miss. I mean, he makes the first guy miss most of the time. Um, he, he, in his mind, he should get 10 yards 
and make two guys miss every time. Um, so he's really competitive with it. But yeah, outstanding player. Um, you know, the numbers, the numbers don't really bother me that much. Um, and part of that is like last year we had a touchdown return. Anytime you have that, the numbers get inflated. Um, I would say I feel like he's still playing at a high level for us. And that's something you either have or you don't make that first person miss. I mean, you can work on it a little bit, I guess, but just his ability, that's an innate trait yeah, that he's. I would say a lot of, a lot of those qualities are you're born with, you know. Um, so, yeah, I would say it's hard to teach a guy a lot of that stuff. Obviously, this, is, uh, this wasn't one of our, our better games um, over as a team and uh, more importantly, defensively. Um, it's always disappointing when you, you have one of these type of outings. And the one thing that we have to do and what we did do is look at it, um, see how we could all get better uh, and move forward, forward from it. All right, because we have a, a good team coming, coming in our house um, for our bye, and we got to do a good job against this team. AG, hey, does anything change in the way you coach immediately following that game? Do you, do you move on quicker? Do you focus on it more? With, how, how do you handle it with your players when, when you have a performance like that? I mean, I think the first thing you have to do is identify the issues um, from my coach and a player's aspect. And we watched this, uh, we watched the whole game together uh, as a defense staff. Um, and man, it, it was tough to watch. All right, it was tough for all of us as coaches and as players. Um, and you have to immediately correct the mistakes because you can't go into the next game without identifying the issues that you had and, um, and being able to correct them as a coach and then being able to move forward. That's exactly what we did. Biggest issue was was it? You know, Dan had talked a little bit about you know guys afraid of the snowball effect where one guy makes a mistake and all of a sudden people are trying to cover for other people. Is there something schematically you do? And that and that usually yeah. happens, um, you know, because I, I, we have a team of guys that really care. Um, we have a team of guys that that really um, like try to show up for each other, and sometimes at the end of the day, man, you just got to do your job, and um, and you got to do it well. Um, and that's across the board. And I've said this several times, man, this is, this is a partnership between coaches and players, all right? So we as coaches got to make sure that we give them everything that we can so they can operate um, the best way they can. And then players, you got to go out there and execute at a high level. And we'll continue to say that. We'll continue to do that. Um, and that's our job as coaches. And that's their job as players. We asked um, Dan just about some of the that the coverage issues in that game. Yeah. Look, oftentimes it looked like the receiver was wide open, big cushion. He said that's that's not the way it was supposed to be. It's not the way it was called. So yeah. so what happens there? Is that a, a player that's that's ad living, not listening? What's going on when there's cushion? No, I don't want to say that. Um, because if, if if that was the case of not listening, then we wouldn't be uh, our performances before wouldn't be the way they were. So um, that's totally off base. Uh, I think it's more or less of man. This was one of those games where you know. Our guys just struggle, you know, and I would say our coaches, we all struggle. Um, this was a damn good team. And I would say this, I was glad to be a part of it because it lets us know um, as an organization, if we want to be one of these elite organizations, man, we have to always have that standard of playing a certain way. So, um, and Baltimore is that standard, you know, like a couple of other teams that's in this league. And everybody um, wants to be looked at looked at that way organizationally and um, as an identity as a team. So um, again, we all have to do our part. Um, I have to do mine. The coaches have to do theirs and the players have to do theirs. You know, I'm wondering when defensive backs do give a certain amount of cushion, yeah. does that lessen the margin of error for the defensive line? They just have to win their battles. Otherwise, they'll be so wide open to the make plays one, like that. The one thing that I talk about uh, more than anything um, is the greatest example of team defense is, uh, is pass defense because rushing coverage, it all works together. Um, now, there were several times where, I mean, the guys were covered, and, man, we did not get a chance to get to the quarterback as best we could. And then there were times when <clears throat> we got to the quarterback, we weren't as tight in coverage as we should have been. Um, and there were some times where we just flat out, you know, just missed our coverage, you know. So um, I know in a couple of uh, – maybe 100 and damn near 200 yards, man, Lamar just dumped the ball off. <laughs> and, you know, that was a lot of yards, you know. So, um, but those are things that we can easily, easily clean up. Um, 
from a coach's perspective and from a player's, you know, and um, and they 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 knew it right away. Um, we knew it right away. Um, and man, we look forward to getting on the field and, and playing this next game so we can get right back on track of who we are. So I know, like, you know, I get what you're saying about glad to be a part of it, right? Because that's the elite standard that we all want to. Say it one time. The, you know, you said I like what you said about you know this is you know you're glad to be a part of it because you know this is the elite standard that we're all trying yeah. to live up to. But what is the you know, these games also happen in the NFL, right? Like, can't you just chalk it up to Lamar? It was one of those days. I mean, even Baltimore lost the Colts team that people thought they shouldn't have. Man, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you do that, but you also, and this is just me, you know, you also look at the le legit, you look also look at the elite, say, what are they doing that you can copy? Or what have they been doing, um, especially if it fits into what you're doing? To me, I mean, you're not going to look at the teams that don't do anything. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna look at the elite team and see how they operate. Um, but you're absolutely right. I mean, there's there's games across this league that happen. I mean, no one thought that San Francisco, the Vonta defense, would get 500 some yards put on them. But I told you guys last week, this is the NFL, and things like this happen. So I don't know where this notion comes from that everything's gonna be just roses every time you go out there and play. Man, I don't care who you have on your team. Um, each week you have to be at the top of your game. And that's another thing that I think Baltimore does a really good job of. And they understand that because they've done it so long. I mean, you take Pittsburgh, they've done it so long. You might have your ups and downs, but the identity of that organization and franchise is, man, listen, we have to be on top of our game. And we're on our way there. I'll tell you that right now. And I'm talking about on both sides of the ball, so including special teams. And um, I look forward to the go forward with us. I know we have asked you about him several times this season. Uh, you're using Jack in different ways than he was used to Iowa, right? Yeah. The edge, the, the blitzing, um, certainly more of it here. How, how valuable, just given the newness of it, how valuable is every single rep that he experiences in terms of just building that memory bank? Um, man, we all love that player to death because every little thing matters to him and every mistake he takes it to heart. Um, and you really try to get that player to get on to the next play because he cares so much. Um, there are some things in this game where he made mistakes at. And the, the good thing is, is, man, you're in the NFL and these things are going to happen to you, but you have to understand things beforehand and what does the picture tell you before so you can allow yourself not to get yourself in those situations. So you're right. Every rep that he takes um, out there on the field, man, uh, a great learning experience for him. And I try to tell him, listen, Yes, you can look at it as a failure, but you also have to look at it as a, as a, a, a way to learn on what not to do. So, um, like, that player has to play as much as possible because he's a damn good player. Against the Ravens in particular, I mean, that's a big eye candy team. Um, yeah. You don't see that kind of eye candy, I guess, probably at the college level. So is that one of the biggest hurdles for young players, just learning how to process so much more pre-snap? Absolutely. Um, I mean, the college game is so much different than the, um, than the NFL game. And there are some things that, that, you know, that the colleges do that he might understand a whole lot better than us because the college is coming into this league. Um, exactly when we played Kansas City, there are some concepts he's like, oh, yeah, we see this here all the time. You know, and he was able to talk us through how they saw it at Iowa. Um, but in this league, there are some things that he has to learn also. And, um, and he's doing a good job of learning that. Um, and, listen, he takes every rep um, – he takes it personally, and, and you the good player to do that. Um, he's going to continue to be a, a good player for us. He's going to continue to get reps for us. Duker was talking earlier this week just about Kirby. He said, you know, teams maybe haven't been challenging him. Now, yeah. are you guys like that? And that's where you know, some of the, uh, the lack of interceptions have come from. How do you think Kirby has played overall, and is he frustrated at all by that, not, not yeah. getting the turnovers he had last year? Listen, I think any, um, any player that's used to getting their hands on the ball and um, – and it's not happening for you, you know, has a level of frustration. Uh, I think when you look at it uh, in totality, um, I don't know what the number, I know it was up there as far as explosive plays. And one of the reasons why, because of that, you know, he wasn't getting the chance where the ball was getting upfield and he was getting a chance to go make those plays. But what he has to do is just be patient and they will come. Um, and they come in bunches. They come in bunches, just like sacks, just like interceptions, just like fumbles. Um, and we're trying to keep him to just, man, do not get out of character and go, don't go try to do anything outside the defense. Go make these plays because these plays will come to you. But 
Um, I thought this past game that he, he had a pretty good game, to be honest with you. There were some tackles that he made that saved us, that gave us another chance to play. And that's our mindset for the most part. Get the ball down and give us another chance to play. And he did a good job of that. I know the numbers maybe don't show it uh, from a statistical standpoint with, with Las Vegas, but they've got some pretty good you know, players on that side of the football. Just maybe what jumps out to you and are the numbers maybe not indicative of the challenge this week? To me, I'm looking at the players um, more than the numbers. They have a running back that, that led the league in rushing. They have a receiver that's an all-pro. They have a quarterback. Now, you do look at this. You look at his, uh, his record as far as wins and losses. It's pretty damn good. Um, they have another receiver in Myers, who I think is very underrated. He kind of reminds me of St. Brown because they use him a lot as far as going to dig these guys out and block. And then his body control and his way to um, his ability uh, to catch in traffic. They have a tight end that they drafted high, um, who our players know this player. Um, and he put up a lot of yardage on one of our players in a bowl game. You know, so um, you just look at all that. Then you look at exactly how they play when you take a look at this, this O-line. I mean, they're gritty. They're tough. Um, they're going to run the ball. So I think I damn near just went over their whole offense lets you know exactly who they have. So this is, you know, this, and it doesn't matter. And, and, and there's no cakewalks, man. You know, this is going to be a tough game for us. All right, but I will tell you this. Um, our guys will be ready for it. I do know that. Specifically, specifically with Adams, I think every receiver I've talked to in the locker room over the years has, has labeled him as one of the best guys at releasing off the line of scrimmage. Absolutely. You've seen every kind of receiver in, during your career. Uh, the guys that were, were great with the release, as, as a cornerback, what's the, the number one thing to, to make sure you're doing your job successfully? Patience, because he's very patient. He's going to force you to make a move because um, he has this neck with most of the quarterbacks that he's played with um, to understand exactly how he plays. It's almost like he's playing basketball. I remember a guy that played in Buffalo, Steve Johnson. I don't know if you guys remember this player. Um, but, man, he kind of reminds me of him. You know, probably not the – a 40 yard fastest guy, but man, this, the quick twitch within the movements of his routes off the line, um, you don't see a lot of guys with that. And he is, he is a, um, he's one of a kind, I would say that. He is one of a kind.